So this is me working in my RV office. And this is me working from my RV office. And today's video is about what we do to be able to work and travel on the road full time. Stay tuned. The most popular question, which we've received many, many times over the years, and we're here to finally answer it, is what do we do for work? What do we do that enables us to financially fund this full-time RV lifestyle? So we're actually a little different from a lot of folks that we meet on the road in that mm -hmm. I have a regular full-time 40-hour work week job that I'm expected to be there Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 Central Time. I'll share some more detail about my job in just a few minutes. My part of the story is much shorter than mine. <laughs> but at the time we decided to live in an RV, I was in between jobs. I was marketing and communications manager for a data analytics company in Boulder, Colorado. And they unfortunately closed their USA office. Mark spent amazing because he's the primary breadwinner and he was very supportive of me embracing some creative passions that I had been wanting to explore for a while. So I've been working on a couple of books while we've been on the road. Uh, I also do some lifestyle coaching and I've been doing that for a number of years, helping people make big shifts in their life and transition into a new direction and that's something I've done myself many times over the years, hence my qualifications in that arena. So I do my coaching calls via Skype and FaceTime. So that's really easy for me to do from anywhere in any time zone. I also have done quite a bit of share trading over the years. And so I've been managing our investments and done some share trading. Uh, but you know, I've actually stepped away from that. I'm not doing that as much now. I found there's actually not as much freedom in that as I no. had hoped because you still end up being dependent on what's happening with the markets. Short term trading in and out. And that can actually get pretty stressful. And, yeah, it's inconsistent. and, and it's inconsistent. It, yeah. My journey really like I like me doing like that. It. When it's going well, I really like it. When it's not going well, I don't like it. So much. Don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I don't spend as much time on that as I used to because I found that, that the amount of time I was putting into it and the return I was getting weren't consistent and actually weren't as joyful and rewarding for me as doing the more creative projects. I've done some marketing projects as well for clients, but again, just recently I've decided to put a stop to that and just focus more on what we're doing here with. RV love because that's more fun. It's so well, it's so much more fun, but it's so much more rewarding. I mean, we both yeah. get so much intrinsic reward out of helping answer the questions that we had when we were getting when we were starting to consider this lifestyle. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, the work that I do with RV love with the blog and YouTube, in case you're wondering, we are not making a ton of money out of this at all. That is not the reason that we embarked on this. So we yeah. embarked on it to share. It was actually very much a creative outlet for me to mm -hmm. learn and to grow and learn and practice new skills firsthand. So that's been great for that. And the little bit of money that we have been making, it's been helping with like hosting fees of the website, a little bit of camera equipment, but when I was doing these other projects, whether it was marketing projects for other clients or whether it was you know, dealing with the financial markets, really threw off our work-life balance to the level where we realized that we valued a much more peaceful and harmonious environment and, and schedule over a stressful and busy one. I mean, that's the whole reason we embarked on this lifestyle. And uh, that was the whole point of this journey, was to be able to live and work and travel sustainably. And when I say sustainably, I mean, that's personally sustainably and financially sustainably. Right. You know, and yeah. not drive ourselves into the ground. We wanted to have the time and the energy to really be able to appreciate and be present and enjoy our travels. And if you imagine doing a full time job and then full time travel and then doing full time content on top of that, you might understand why we don't do a daily vlog. <laughs> do I and won't. <laughs> But we, you know, agreed on just being able to live on Mark's salary alone yeah. and and because my income fluctuates each month, we don't want to rely on that. So anything that I earn on top of what Mark's salary is, is considered a bonus. We don't rely on it for our everyday life and that helps us stay mindful of our spending and reduces the pressure on us both because my schedule is totally flexible. It can fit in around Mark and his schedule. Um, it works for us. You know? I'm director of operations for a nutritional supplement company out of Texas. It's a young, successful company, about four years old. I joined the company in its infancy uh, when there were maybe 70 employees. And since then, we've grown really quickly up to over 200. 
And I started off with them as operations project manager back in May of 2013. When we decided to hit the road in the RV, it was actually really funny because my mom was concerned about how this lifestyle was going to affect my career. But not only has it not impacted it negatively, I've actually been promoted twice in these first couple of years that we've been on the road. But I've been doing this successfully for two and a half years, and uh, which I think is huge to show that it really is possible to have the structure of a regular job and still be on the road. Of course, you have to create that environment to support that. So connectivity drives a lot of our travel. Uh, we think it's a small price to pay to be able to have the freedom and flexibility to work and travel full time and exploring the country along the way. The head office for the company I work for is in central time and so that makes us have to modify our schedule depending on which time zone we're in. Which means if I'm on the east coast then I probably can sleep in a little bit later but I have to work later. If I'm on the west coast then I have to get up super early to be able to be online and available when everyone's expecting me to. But it's actually kind of fun because it almost makes it feel like you have mm. a different job when you're having different hours. In some um, weeks it's nice to feel like you have a different job. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but um, I get a salary and benefits like health insurance. 401k. Um, and 401k and vacation yeah. time. But what I don't get is a lot of vacation time. Not much at all. Um, which is why this lifestyle is so appealing to me. As director of operations, pretty much my role is just about helping the company run more smoothly and more efficiently, trying to save the company money. I also support other divisions of the company, kind of the glue that holds the departments together, um, and aids communication between departments and moving projects along, and achieve all the desired deadlines and objectives. I host a lot of conference calls with my job, um, mostly with the executive team. It's typically about a third of my week. The rest of my time pretty much spent on email and other calls, researching initiatives, making recommendations to management. And so yes, I do consider myself really fortunate to be able to do all these things from the road. It's amazing what technology has been able to enable for us. The, the irony is the last major project that Mark did when we still lived in our stick and break in Colorado mm -hmm. was setting up the first office <laughs> yeah. in Colorado. Yeah, it was actually really funny because he story. came to me and he said, oh, i got really exciting news. We're going to set up an office in, in uh, Colorado. I'm like, oh, we're going to have to talk some more about that because uh, um, it was just funny because right around that time was when I was getting ready and we were making our plans to hit the road and I was just getting about to ask him for some approval on that and uh, he opened up that office of conversation. But it worked out just fine. And, yeah. uh, um, he, was, he gave you his blessing. He did. He gave me my blessing. Yeah. And so he was one of the few people that I told um, yeah. before I hit the road. I mean, we're a pretty good sized company, but I tried to keep it very quiet. Um, I told my immediate supervisor and like one or two other people, and I kept it very quiet for the first six months that I was on the road. I Because um, I wanted to prove that it'd be no impact, and I wanted people to not be looking extra close. And uh, I wanted to be able to say after six months, if someone said, oh, I can totally tell you're on the road. I'm like, well, you couldn't tell the last six months. Why? Mm. What's different today? And so I thought that was really cool to be able to do that. And so after six months, I was a little more free. I told a few extra people, yeah. but I still didn't make it widely known at the company until almost two years I was on the road. Um, yeah. And I was actually on the road longer than I was in a stick and brick at that point. So that's when I looked the whole company. So. <laughs> but we still don't advertise it and that's why you know a lot of people have asked us what we do for work. It is actually mentioned on the blog on our website. It's not like we hide what we do but we haven't publicized it on YouTube and because it's pretty hard to fly under the radar when you have a YouTube video up there. But it, it is on the website under the, about us and on the FAQ page. You just gotta go dig for yeah, it a little more. Gotta dig a little bit, yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, that, that really was a way for you to demonstrate your productivity and connectivity by just flying under the radar for a while and people didn't even notice. In fact, even when we went to Australia for a month in March. <laughs> no, that was the really sneaky one. That was yeah. sneaky and we didn't tell anyone or get approval for that either. But, no, you know. Yeah. Nobody noticed. It was a little tough on the time zone change, but. Graveyard shift. Working <laughs> graves to be able to work those daytime and central time, but pulled it off and it was pretty cool. So. Yeah.
So there you go. That's it in a nutshell. It's, it's always a long answer to a short question, but hopefully you found it really interesting and useful to learn, you know, not just about, well, we do this for a living, but a little bit more about how we made that work and the considerations that we had before we hit the road. Yeah, stuff to keep in mind when you're trying to consider whether what you do is going to be viable on the road. Um, as always, we'd love to hear your comments and pop them down below. If you're working from the road and you've found a creative way to live the RV lifestyle and maybe you can share what you do down in the comments for the benefit of everyone else reading them and uh, we'll catch you next time. <laughs>